Hey everyone, my name is Luke and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at one shot colour versus monochrome once again. This is going to be part three of my recent comparison series where basically I take the time to capture data from the exact same location with two very different astronomy setups admittedly but we're going to go more into that in just a moment and we look at them compared side by side on the screen so that without any influence you guys can draw your own conclusions from what you're seeing with your own eyes on the screen um, basically I'm going to put some information on the screen for you about these two shots right now and I'm also going to run through it just very briefly in the meantime so what we're looking at on the left is data taken through my Celestron Rasa 8 uh, the camera used for this was a one shot colour, it's the Player 1 Uranus C and the data was all captured through a duo narrowband filter from IDAS. It's the IDAS NBZ UHS, that stands for Ultra High Speed. It's the right companion, uh, companion filter to my RASA, effectively. Now, on the right here, instead, we're looking at a full-blooded monochrome setup. So this is my refractor, the Skywatcher Esprit 120. The camera used was an ASI 183mm Pro, shot in bin 2 mode to capture a little bit more data a little bit more faster for want of a better explanation as it's slightly oversampled without binning on this uh, and the filters used were astronomic SHO 6 nanometer filters so actual true discrete filters giving me three separate color channels to work with and um, there are other differences between these two and it can never be a truly fair comparison because of that but all the same I think it is still a valid spend of time uh, because these do represent fairly high-end to typical uh, astronomy rigs and approaches to astronomy that you guys out there might be interested in pursuing yourselves so without any more ado whatsoever we're going to get straight into this comparison now uh, and we're not going to start with these finished images we're going to touch upon these towards the end so instead what we're going to start with is this so along the top row right here so starting top left we're looking at the HA data only from that monochrome camera top middle we're looking at the oxygen 3 data from the 183 and top right we're looking at the sulfur 2 data so as I mentioned it's got three truly discrete channels through through three separate narrowband filters uh, whereas on the bottom we're just looking at the R, G and B extracted from this image so this has had no processing none of these actual uh, prior images have had any processing done for the sake of transparency for you guys um, it's just basically that image and I've hit RGB extract on it and this is the R, the G and the B all with an STF auto stretch applied so as you can see it's purely linear data no processing whatsoever so it's all displayed just as is the only thing that has been done to any of this data really is to resize them ever so slightly to match so that when I go to say a one-to-one -one zoom on these views uh, it's actually going to show you the same portion of the screen roughly for the sake of fairness again uh, in making this comparison so uh, the first thing that pops to my mind is that this pure red channel from the RASA in the bottom left right here is a lot more signal rich than the pure HA channel from the refractor is now part of that could be down to the speed of the optical system uh, but also I think the the Uranus C does have a very strong red response and I'm not so sure that 183 sensor does have the strongest of red uh, wavelength responses and that's perhaps partly shown by this. Now, uh, as I mentioned, I'm not going to go too far into this because there are so many differences, but just at this level of zoom, you can see in terms of red at this distance, Rasa is the winner in terms of signal. That uh, Esprit data though does have much tighter stars. In terms of oxygen, there is a more clean separation between the channels, again, due to it having a truly discrete oxygen 3 channel to work with, rather than just an extracted blue and green channel, which both contain that oxygen 3 data on a one-shot colour channel, because the actual colour of oxygen 3 is roughly, for of a better explanation for this, it's, it's roughly teal, which falls right in between the response of the pixels that are both green and blue on that sensor so what you're seeing in the green and blue on the bottom middle and bottom right is roughly the same data just with twice as much signal in that middle one because there's double the amount of green pixels on a one shot color camera as there are red or blue effectively so uh, we can go ahead really and largely ignore that right hand shot but 
when we take a look at that oxygen there between the two, uh, it's stronger perhaps on the Rasa, again, likely down to that magnificent speed it's working with, uh, but it is more cleanly defined, I would say, on the Esprit. At least that's my take on it. And if you guys have different takes, that's absolutely fine. And I would love if you'd leave a comment for me. And uh, I, I just enjoy reading everybody's uh, comments on these things. And I do read every single comment. Uh, again, now on the Sulfur, this is something I can't compare between the two because I don't have a discrete Sulfur channel. That I took with the one-shot color camera, it's just duo narrowband data. So that's simply hydrogen and oxygen. And the way I go about making the uh, the Rasa image effectively match this um, Esprit data in terms of like Hubble palette um, appearance overall is by synthesizing a sulfur channel uh, with a custom combination of that red and green. Now, if you want to learn how to do that, I have done a few different tutorials on that method uh, that I've cooked up myself. To share with all you guys out there, I do see lots and lots and lots of people using that now and that's fantastic to see. Uh, I'll put a link to that particular tutorial in the description box down below for you as well. But now we've taken a look at this in kind of a zoomed out one third view. I think we should zoom in a little bit more and take a finer look at this data. So I'm going to go to a one to one view as you can see on both the hydrogen and the oxygen. I'm not going to bother with the sulfur as we have no direct comparison to make so I'll just close those on the screen a second so we've got less visual confusion and as you can see now so if we scroll across just a little bit so we're getting this kind of curl of nebulosity and also these interesting spires coming out to be uh, in the field of view there I'll just make all of these roughly match uh, a few people came up with a really helpful um, tip for me where you can basically drag across one identifier on top of the other and make it match but I can't make these match as you'll probably see there because they have different image direct um, dimensions I'm tripping up on my uh, words ever so slightly so I do have to manually align these so uh, sorry about the time spent doing that but from what you can roughly see on the screen right now uh, I would say that the HA channel up close looks better on the Esprit data it's simply sharper it's simply sharper and cleaner there isn't tons and tons in it the the Rasa data is a lot stronger, but the Esprit data is sharper and probably a little bit cleaner. Now, if we go that touch further in, so to a two to one zoom now, just make these roughly match on the screen there. You can see because with the monochrome setup, we've been focusing individually per channel. Uh, you're getting that perfect tight stars, regardless of whether it's imaging in effectively red or blue at a given moment. Whereas on the Rasa with a one-shot color camera, you have to focus all of the channels at once. So that tends to inevitably lead to a little bit of bloat in one channel or the other. So in this case, you're seeing sharper red stars. Sorry if I'm going a bit fast with this. Then you are kind of effectively blue or green stars. So you can see they're ever so slightly more bloated, even though they are still more than sharp enough. But it's not in the same sort of realms of sharpness as we're seeing from this Esprit data, even though it is obviously quite a lot stronger overall. Now, if we take just another step zoomed in to a three to one zoom, so we're going really pixel peepy deep into this. Now you can see there's a curl of nebulosity. Uh, I'll just make this bigger on the screen for you just a moment so you can see. So it's a, a bit of dark uh, nebula in there, a bit of dust knotted up and kind of rotated over itself. But when you compare Side by side, I think the overall resolution captured on both the Rasa red channel and the Esprit HA channel, it is comparable, but I have to give the nod overall to the Esprit. It is ever so slightly higher resolution, and we could expect that because this thing was shot at a focal length of 840 millimeters, I do believe, rather than the Rasa's 400 millimeters. So, obviously quite a lot less focal length uh, to go with and that's also probably partially the reason of why the stars are that much tighter and smaller it tends to go hand in hand uh, that at least past uh, up to a certain point should I say your stars do get smaller with longer focal length um, and effectively a little bit more bloated by comparison to your object uh, the shorter focal length that you go 
again that is up to a certain point there are many caveats involved in that but effectively hopefully you guys can see on the screen again we've seen a lot more signal overall on the rasa it's, it's physically a lot brighter there's more there but the sharpness is a little bit sharper on the esprit now this is as i mentioned absolutely unprocessed data i've done nothing to it whatsoever this is stacked cropped and stf stretched um so we'll go ahead and we'll move these off the screen for just a moment there and we can go ahead now and get back into that kind of finished image comparison so as I mentioned, over on the left, this is the Rasa one, of course, shot with a one-shot color, uncooled camera. Um, I think it's pretty close when it comes to this kind of zoomed out view like this. Um, I don't see massive, massive differences. Again, we can see that discrete oxygen channel, there is more separation visible for one of uh, a better way to explain this. I'm having trouble finding the right words really, but there is a separation that I'm seeing in that oxygen versus the hydrogen then i'm perhaps the lines are blurred ever so slightly when it comes to the one shot color narrowband data over here um these spires like poking out towards the uh the, the center of this nebula they're showing up really well in both of these um the knots of dust and nebulosity in the completed images they are better in the esprit image but there is also one other final point which i need to make about these two images of course and that is that i I'd, i actually lost quite a lot of this esprit data so uh, sorry the rasa data so i've just took some notes down here I, I actually had roughly 20 hours of data that chloe took uh over here on the esprit versus just around about 10 hours of data which we're comparing now with the one shot color so there is a huge difference in overall integration between these two and we have to factor that in ever so slightly because uh, you know this isn't magic you do have to put the time in uh, of course to get the results um so that said uh looking at this still i don't think that extra 10 hours would make this fully catch up to that esprit data uh nor would the stars ever be quite as tight but it holds up really well given that we're talking about a comparison between a uncooled camera that comes in at well less than 500 pounds or 500 dollars versus a monochrome setup that's roughly 1500 to 2000 pounds or dollars um the conversion rate's quite uh close at the minute but yeah effectively i think between the two if you're not pixel peeping all day long uh, I, I actually like the one shot color image overall better but when you start to zoom in maybe if you're going to use it as a desktop background or print them out at a large size you'd probably want to go with monochrome and the refractor on this one so um i hope that that's been an interesting comparison if a little bit of a rapid one so if you've enjoyed this and if it's helped you at all then please do take a moment to leave a like on the video for me as it really does help me out and i think we're just going to leave things there so thanks very much indeed to each and every one of you guys out there for watching i really do appreciate you all and until next time just look after yourselves and clear skies <laughs>